Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. The topic of this video is meiosis. I've already covered mitosis and amitosis in previous video, so I'll suggest you to watch it first and then continue further in this video. So meiosis is a special type of division which occurs only in sexually reproducing organisms. Meiosis involves two sequential cycle of nuclear and cell division called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, but DNA replication occurs only once. Meiosis 1 results in reduction of number of chromosomes, so it is also called reductional division. Meiosis 1 is much longer and complex than meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 is identical to mitosis but only occurs after completion of meiosis 1. As no change in number of chromosomes occur during meiosis 2, it is also called equational division. Meiosis exclusively occurs in diploid cells and is divided into three types. The first is zygotic meiosis, which occurs in zygote. The organisms undergoing zygotic meiosis have haplontic life cycle, that is, their body is made up of haploid cells. For example, protists and fungi show this type of meiosis. Second type is sporic meiosis, which occurs in spore mother cells and results in formation of haploid spores, for example, plants and some algae. The third and last type is gametic meiosis which results in formation of haploid gametes. All animals and most protists show this type of meiosis. Now let's see the actual process of meiosis with the help of animations. Meiosis 1 is preceded by interface, which is same as studied in previous video. Let me give a brief idea of it. Interface is divided into three phases, G1, S and G2 phase. The main events of G1 phase is doubling of most of the cell organelles. The S phase involves replication of DNA and duplication of centrioles. Please remember that DNA replication occurs only once during entire meiosis. Along with that, histone proteins are also synthesized to pack the DNA. and remaining cell organelles are doubled in G2 phase. Also synthesis of tubulin proteins occurs during this phase, which will be used in spindle fiber formation. After completion of interphase, starts meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 is further divided as prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. During prophase 1, the change is occurring outside the nucleus is similar to prophase of mitosis. That is, movement of centriole toward poles, appearance of astral rays and spindle fibers, disappearance of nuclear envelope. But the changes inside the nucleus makes prophase 1 the most complex phase of entire meiosis. So now let's see the changes inside the nucleus. For the ease of study, Prophase 1 is divided into 5 substages which are leptotin, zygotin, pacatin, diplotin and dicanosis. During leptotin, chromosomes are attached to nuclear lamina in the form of a bundle which appears like a bouquet of flower. Hence it is also called bouquet stage. In zygotin, pairing of homologous chromosomes occurs by an event called synapsis and the paired chromosomes are now called bivalents or tetrads. The bivalents are stabilized by formation of nucleoprotein complex called synaptonymal complex. In pacatin, the exchange of DNA between non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes occurs. This event is called crossing over which is responsible for variations in characters of sexually reproducing organisms. At the site of crossing over, several enzymes and proteins aggregate, resulting in formation of recombination nodule. Crossing over completes in pacatin and, the, and in the next stage, the synaptonemal complex is dissolved. This dissolution results in appearance of X-shaped structures between bivalents, which represents the site of crossing over. These structures are called chiasmata. The last stage of prophase 1 is diakinesis in which the nucleolus and nuclear envelope disappears. This marks the end of prophase 1.
The next phase is metaphase 1 in which the bivalents are aligned to the equator of the cell. This alignment of bivalent is called double metaphasic plate. In metaphase 1, each chromosome of bivalent is attached to only one spindle, while in mitotic metaphase, each chromosome is attached to spindle fibers from both the ends. In anaphase 1, the bivalents are separated due to shortening of spindle from centriole end. Since plating of centromere do not occur in anaphase 1, due to which each chromosome having two sister chromatids moves towards either of the poles. Anaphase 1 completes when chromosomes reaches the poles. Reduction in number of chromosomes occurs during anaphase 1. After anaphase 1, the next stage is telophase 1, in which the nuclear envelope and nucleolus reappears. But chromosomes do not undergo complete decondensation and are only partially decondensed. Cytokinesis occurs by formation of a ring of contractile proteins or motor proteins and results in formation of two cells having half the number of chromosomes but each chromosome having a pair of sister chromatids. The purpose of meiosis II is to separate these pairs of sister chromatids. Between meiosis I and meiosis II, there is another phase called interkinesis or intrameiotic interface in which the following changes are observed. Replication of DNA is absent, histone proteins are synthesized and centrioles are duplicated. Now meiosis II is exactly similar to that of mitosis and the events of prophase II, metaphase II, anaphase II and telophase II are also similar to that of mitotic prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase respectively. So after completion of cytokinesis, we get four haploid cells, each having one chromatid of each chromosome. These haploid cells may either be gametes or spores or entire organism, depending on the type of meiosis. So that's all for this video. I hope it was helpful to make you understand the topic better. And if you found it helpful, make sure you are subscribed for more such videos.